I bet a month or two ago, you probably never thought you'd see a situation where the local supermarket shelves are empty. But recent events have shown us that our societies are incredibly fragile. Whether it's a virus pandemic, natural disaster, civil unrest or otherwise, these events are only going to increase. I'm James Bruce, you're watching MakeUseOf.com and today we're taking a look at one particular aspect of emergency preparedness, and that is power. There are many countries in the world already where 24-7 power from the grid just can't be guaranteed. This is the Max Oak Bluetti EB150, or also sold in the UK under the Power Oak brand as I have here. The only difference is the voltage that they put out, 110 volts for the US, 220 for the UK. Otherwise, they are functionally identical. With a total capacity of 1500 watt hours, a peak output of 1200 watts, and a continuous output of 1000 watts, that is a serious amount of power contained within this little box. In terms of design and build, it weighs an absolute ton, or more literally, about 38 pounds or 17 kilograms and it's about the size of a mini desktop PC. So it's certainly not small by any means, and it's not lightweight. Now, although there are no ruggedization features to speak of, there's no rubber covers over the sockets or rubber bumpers on the sides, the case itself is made out of solid steel. So it'll certainly take a couple of bumps, scratches, or even the occasional bite from zombies or the local animal population without any concerns. However, it isn't waterproof by any means. It's not even splash proof. There are, of course, electrical sockets on this, so do keep away from water. And of course, given that this is an enormous lithium ion battery, you shouldn't shoot it or do anything else that would pierce through this thick metal case as that may result in a fire. So the Max Oak Bluetti EB150 isn't just a massive battery pack. It's sold as a solar generator, and although technically it doesn't actually generate anything itself, it does come with the cables you need to connect it directly to a solar panel such as this. And inside here you have an MPPT controller, which is specially designed to readjust solar panels and take advantage of, say, extracting power on a cloudy day. So out of the box, they include this nine millimeter DC to MC4 connector. And this is what you'll find on any solar panels if you have them in your roof. Now the package doesn't include a solar panel, uh, you will need to source some yourself. And there are a couple of specifications that you need to match, but generally speaking, you'll be able to work with anything. This is just one that I picked up a couple of years ago. It was about 100 to $200 at the time. I think it's rated to 180 watts. In the peak of sunlight today, I was getting around 120 watts into here. It's still springtime in the UK, so it's not as full as it could be. This morning when I plugged it in, it was getting 60 watts. Now, at the moment, it's saying it's about 50% charge. It's a bit hard to tell because there isn't an exact number or power value that's displayed. Uh, instead, there's just five different segments. So I'd estimate from looking at that, it's about 50%. And that's having been plugged in for a good five, six hours today, charging just off this small solar panel. Now this isn't in fact anywhere near the maximum that can go into this. It's rated to up to 500 watts of input power. But as I mentioned, there's a couple of specifications for that. The minimum input voltage is 16 and the maximum is 60 volts and a maximum of 10 amps. Now that means that if you have a single panel that doesn't quite put out 16 volts, it's not gonna charge it. However, if you have multiple panels, then you can combine them in clever ways. Combining them in series will increase the voltage to get you into that range while combining them in parallel will increase the ampage that they are putting out while keeping the voltage the same. Now, obviously I can't tell you how long it's gonna take you to charge this over solar because it's going to depend upon how big your panels are, how you've got them wired up, what time of year it is, how the weather is, etc. There's so many different variables. What I can say is that on this small panel, it's gonna take uh, about a day and a half to two days for a full charge. But again, that's, that's nowhere near the full power. In theory, if you had sort of the maximum 500 watts going into it, 
uh, well, you'd still have a bit of a power loss because of the uh, conversion efficiency, but best case scenario, it would take you about five hours to fully charge. When it's plugged into the AC power adapter, that's a, a fixed amount of power that we can say is going to take 10 hours to fully charge this but over solar, it's going to vary. One great feature to note is that it does have overcharge protection. And that means that once it's fully charged, uh, even though you still have the solar plugged in and pumping power into there, it's going to just cut off that connection electrically. And that means it won't overcharge the battery and it won't set fire to itself, which is obviously a great thing. In terms of discharging or using the power, there are two AC sockets around the back, four USB sockets on the front as well as a USB-C PD port, which is up to 45 watts for your USB-C laptop, like a MacBook Pro, etc. There's also a 12 volt 9 amp car port or cigarette lighter, they used to be called. Now, as I mentioned, the maximum output is 1000 watts continuous with 1200 peak. As a quick guide to actual power usage, of devices. A modern chest freezer would take anywhere from around 30 to 100 watts. The oxygen concentrator that keeps my dad alive uses around 300 watts at most and a CPAP machine can be anywhere from about 30 to 60 watts. Now these could all be comfortably powered from the Bluetti EB150, all of them at the same time in fact, along with four phones and a MacBook Pro, all plugged in and charging or running simultaneously. However, something like a kettle is going to take 1000 to 2000 watts or even more. An electric chainsaw is about 2000 watts. Neither of those would work with this device with a maximum output of 1000 watts continuous and a peak of 1200. So before you purchase one of these, you may need to do a little bit of math. Look at exactly what it is that you want to plug into it, total up the total power draw, and also think about how long you want them to be plugged in and activated for. To work out the approximate battery life that you're going to get with a particular power draw, take 1500 and divide it by the total amount of power that you're taking from it. So if that was say a 300 watt medical machine, it would run for 1500 divided by 300 or five hours. On the other hand, an ultra efficient deep freezer that might take say 15 watts of power that would run for a hundred hours on one of these on a full charge. And taking it to the extreme, if you just use this to literally keep your smartphone alive, without any solar input or otherwise charging it at all, you could keep your phone fully charged every single day, use it to complete depletion for about six months. That's a lot of power. So to test the power discharge, I fully charged it up and then started plugging things in. Mainly I added a gaming PC and then a 44 inch plasma screen to start with. And even when I was pushing the graphics card by running Half-Life Alex, the PSU in the computer was only pulling around three to 400 and the total draw was around 650 watt for the whole gaming PC, running a game and that plasma TV. I then plugged in a little lamp, still wasn't enough. So I grabbed a dehumidifier, which was supposedly 150 watt draw, but apparently it had a much higher peak than that, which I wasn't aware of. As soon as I tried to switch that on, everything cut off. Now, when I turned it on, activated everything again, I turned the dehumidifier on first. And that peak was apparently within the limit because then I was able to turn it all on with the plasma and the computer after that. Now, in the end, I just ran out of stuff that was easily to hand to plug in. So I left it running with the total power draw of around 750 watts. Now, in theory, I would expect that to last two hours. Sure enough, I came to check it at an hour and a half then forgot about it. It was still doing fine at that point, but I forgot about it and came back an hour later. So after two and a half hours, it had turned off at some point. So anywhere between an hour and a half to two and a half hours uh, that lasted. And that's pretty much in line with what we would expect for a 1500 watt hour battery. Even so, that is a tremendous amount of power when you think about it. A full on gaming PC running full whack, a lamp, plasma TV, plus a dehumidifier, all on full brightness, full power on the dehumidifier for two hours. That's pretty impressive. 
The only disappointment, of course, was the surge rating of 1200. Wasn't quite enough to handle some of those and then the dehumidifier plugged in as well. Some other models do have a higher surge rating. However, I think if you manage the order in which you've plugged your devices in, that shouldn't be a concern. Now, one of the reasons this is called a generator and not just a battery is because it can simultaneously charge up using solar and discharge to your devices. So in reality, what that means is that if you had a 400 watt, for example, solar panel charging it, and you were drawing only a couple of hundred watts uh, full time, then it would, in theory, be charging up fully during the day, discharging a little at night, and it would run forever on free solar power. You would hope, of course, that your electrical grid comes back at some point. If it doesn't, you've probably got bigger problems to worry about. The only thing it doesn't allow for when it comes to charging and discharging is multiple inputs at the same time. So should you buy the Max Oak Bluetti EB150 or Power Oak? EB150 if you're in the UK. Well, that depends on how much you enjoy your current lifestyle, I guess. If you appreciate having a good size amount of food stored up in your freezer, or if, like my father, you rely on an oxygen machine just to stay alive, then having one of these around just for emergencies is obviously pretty important. As recent events have shown us, our societies are very much vulnerable to sudden shocks supply chains can break down at a moment's notice, and the things you once took for granted will no longer be there. Our electrical grid relies on these little cables strung around the country that can easily be blown over by a tree in the wind, or power stations can be flooded out by unprecedented levels of rainfall. So yes, if not right now in the middle of a financial crisis, then at least once things have returned to normal, you should probably consider saving up for emergency preparedness on many levels, of which power is just one, albeit important, aspect of that. The Power Oak EB150 performs well, outputs an incredible amount of power if you need it, and stores an awful lot inside there. 1500 watt hours, as I showed you earlier, is quite a lot of power. The only downside of this is the price. Something that holds this much power inside of it is just not going to come cheap. For the Max Oak Bluetti US model, the EB150 is going to set you back $1,400. In the UK, the same model is £1,600. Now, you'll find a coupon code down in the comments, and you can combine that with one that's on the Amazon listing page itself, and that'll get you about $290 off of the US model or £200 off of the UK model. This is actually very competitive compared to other models on the market. It's just that in real terms, that is a lot of money. Now, if you need even more capacity, if 1500 watts is not quite enough, then Max Oak also has you covered with the EB240 model, and that's, as the name suggests, 2400 watt hours of power. Now that retails for $2,000, but again, there's a coupon on the listing page itself with $350 off at the moment. So if you are able to act quickly, then do get in on that and save yourself a good bit if you need that extra storage. If you're going to spend that sort of money on a piece of backup power that can keep critical medical equipment going, then it is worth going for the largest one that you can afford because you never really know how long the power is going to be out for. Also, do factor in the cost of a solar panel too, depending on how quickly you want to be able to charge from solar. As I mentioned, the one I have was around $100 to $200, uh, and that would be able to charge this in about a day and a half fully, but that doesn't nearly push what it's capable of. It could actually be connected to two of those panels just fine and charge even quicker. While you can just charge this from the grid and use it as an enormous store of energy, it really is safer if you connect it up to a solar panel and have free energy. You'll be able to last a lot longer. Anyway, thanks for watching and courtesy of Max Oak, we have another EB150 model to give away. Now this competition is limited to US residents only, I'm afraid, but if you'd like to enter that competition, hit up the link in the description and enter your details into the competition widget. And be sure to answer the question where it'll ask you exactly what you'd like to be kept powered on 
during an outage. Please hit like if you appreciated this video and do consider subscribing. We do weekly reviews and giveaways as well as technology tutorials. Until next time, please stay at home and stay safe.